Countdown is freezing the price of 500 items for winter. It follows a Commerce Commission report in March that found there's a lack of competition in our grocery market. So is this a sign the government pressure on our supermarket duopoly is starting to bear fruit? Labor Minister David Parker and National MP Paul Goldsmith are with us this morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. Um, this, is, this is good news, I suppose, from, um, uh, from our supermarkets. I hate to interrupt good news, but can I just correct a mistake that I made about Waldronville Gun Club last week? Yes. I talked about uh, gun club problems with the terrorists from Christchurch. I said Waldron. I got the wrong place. It was, oh. it was Milburn. 30 minutes down the road and so Gosh. and happens to be a gun club at Waldronville and they understandably a bit upset so I said I'd correct it today which I've now done. Oh right. Thank you. Well I can ima <laughs> only imagine the letters you've received in the last week. Oh no, I David. one but fair enough. Yeah, you've got to be careful who you um, defame, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> on <laughs> national television. Um, Alright, well uh, an apology I suppose accepted on their behalf. Um, right, 10 after 7 now. What do you make of this Paul? Is this, because you know a lot of people said oh this investigation into the supermarkets, you know nothing Nothing's going to change. Maybe these little signs, these little changes are, are signs that perhaps it did do something. Look, look, super, supermarkets are doing what any business should do, which is come up with a marketing campaign and get some coverage, and, and so this is uh, what they do, and that's fine. But what New Zealanders are seeing, of course, is a real pressure on their, their budgets uh, from this cost of living crisis. Uh, the wages, uh, wages are only going up uh, slowly, but prices are going up much faster, and so Kiwis are going backwards. And uh, that's been driven by a government that is uh, out of control on its spending uh, and adding costs to businesses, including supermarkets. Yeah, and so well, all the costs are piling on, and that's what's making sure, butter sure and can Even Negative You can't squeeze a bad news story out of a price freeze on 500 items over winter in the supermarket. Oh, well, it's, yeah, that's good, but it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it's, it, He's it's, written it off as PR fluff. It's, We're two minutes. It's it? a campaign. It's it fine. is a it's campaign. Good. It is a I campaign. I mean, they're trying to get they're trying to get attention, and that's good. For but them. I guess the question is, because the focus has been on them, um, mm. perhaps this wouldn't have happened had the investigation not happened, um, David. Yeah, I, I suppose it's hard to say. I mean, I, I do take that Commerce Commission report seriously. We do have competition constraints. Our food prices are high, according to them, relative to other countries. Um, maybe you're right. Maybe it's the pressure of the Commerce Commission, which is an arm of the government. Uh, that has caused this price freeze. Maybe um, Paul's right that you know it's a marketing campaign. Maybe it's a but bit it's of both. A, it's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. So let's celebrate it, Paul. Indeed. <laughs> um, hey, I want to talk about the um, cost of living, and I don't want to dwell on it too long. But when will the crisis be over? When will? Because I don't think anyone really expects. Sure, inflation repressures will will subside. But are prices ever going to actually drop back to where they were? I don't think anyone expects that. So when is the crisis actually over, Paul? Look, uh, look, there's an international element to this, and, and you can't control that, nobody can control that, so you've got to focus on what you can control. Uh, and so here in New Zealand, what can you do? Well, you can take the pressure off by not uh, over-stimulating the economy by uh, government spending like drunken sailors, uh, by having um, l overly loose monetary policy, uh, driven by a change to the way that we operate the Reserve so Bank. So what would you spend? And adding costs. Six billion this, this budget, what would you spend? Well, Two, three? well, I think you've got to come up with uh, something less than that, and that's something for our finance spokesperson to deal with. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's, it's adding fuel to the fire. OK. David, when, when will it... Do you know what I mean? For those people I at do. home, when yeah. will this actually be over? Well, the oil price part of it you would expect would uh, settle down uh, if the war in Ukraine ends. We don't know when that will be. Uh, we hope it will be soon. Um... The supply constraints out of China, well, you know, you see predictions that that being, you know, a year perhaps to, to, to settle. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that prices will continue at the same rate of increase because of no, that. No, but they maybe... won't drop. Will no, they? No, they, they, no they, they won't drop. So, so the question then becomes, but, when, but will wages... My wages, <laughs> when will my wages start to actually take... Yeah. Yeah. You know, the pressure off some of this well, stuff. Well, well, in the last year, I think wage growth was 4.8% and inflation was 68 so there was a 2% gap. Well, in prior years, there were, there were, there were um, you know, it was ahead. Um, so, you know, we, the prediction is, according to the Treasury, that next year wage growth will exceed inflation. But when inflation will get back to where it was which was really historically low levels. Yes, it was. It was. It was. Um, all right, well, let's move on, because uh, the, the answer to that is actually quite depressing. <laughs> when will it be over? Probably in you know, a year, well, at well, least. The sooner we get some good quality government, it would help. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we've been lacking. And, and, and you know, we've just got this, this government that's feeding the beast at the moment, making it worse. You know, and you New Zealand know, families you, are really you struggling. Know, you guys, and, and that's when, why when we're really we, When we on. supported New Zealand with $20 billion of wage support during COVID, sure. you called for more. 
please be consistent. All right, here's something we can all get behind, and that's um, sort of ragging on Trevor Mallard, um, because no one, no one likes what Trevor's been doing. Now, every, all the journalists have been saying behind the scenes, Labour MPs are, are grumbling about Trevor and his actions with the trespassing and whatnot. Yeah. And I know you're an honest guy, David, and I know when you come on the show, you speak honestly. Yeah. So honestly, was that a stupid thing for him to do? Or was I, that a stupid I, thing I, I for would, him to I do? I wouldn't use the word stupid, but he was right to change his mind. Look, I think lots of MPs contacted Trevor and said, look, not sure that you got this one right. I, I was one of them, yes. And what did uh, he say? Uh, well, he listened to me, and then he changed his mind Why within a he day. Why did do it? He's got this well, vindictive he, he, streak, doesn't he? Uh, no. Well, he, he would say that he delegated some of those decisions because he didn't want to take the decision as to who was on the list. Yeah, but we but he's, resp he he's responsible for the list, and Winston Peters was on it. He shouldn't have been. He changed his mind within a day, and he was right to do that. He knew who was on the list, though. I mean, no-one believes he didn't. He's well, been, I, look, I, I don't know whether he did or not. I didn't ask okay. him that question. He's been very erratic. Uh, uh, he stood up in the House and said, my power is absolute. He, he looked like a cross between Nick, uh, you know, um, uh, Jack Nicholson and Henry, uh, King George III. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that's what we've had in this, <laughs> in this Parliament for a long time. And, you know, it's been a distraction. It's a distraction away from the important issues. But, uh, you know... Yeah. We've had a very difficult times, and you know, look, we've been wanting to get some actual um, accountability over the whole parliamentary riot uh, situation, and we've struggled with this, these people blocking us yeah. at every turn. Well, is he off to Dublin? Maybe we'll never get accountability. Is uh, that true? Those Irish eyes are smiling, or maybe not so much these days. <laughs> I think I, they'd, I, they'd I be crying know. into their <laughs> would, Guinness, wouldn't they? We wouldn't want him coming. in charge. <laughs> we wouldn't want him in charge of any kind of diplomacy, as far as I can see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, the, uh, Potter Williams, on a serious note, actually we've got some poll numbers we want to show you. This is from News Hub Live at 6 last night. Um, poll numbers. Is the current police minister too soft on crime? Most people say yes. David? Yeah, I, I, I heard this was coming up. I'm, I'm the fisheries minister. I'm responsible for fisheries enforcement, catching people, you know, poaching power, and gangs do a bit of that. Uh, I don't think the fisheries officers wake up in the morning and say, is David Parker a tough guy before they go out and do their job? My job as minister is to make sure that they've got the you resources and no, laws. You're tough. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually in that sense. You know, I'm in my demeanour is reasonably soft. Yeah, but you so, set the tone for how the police handle things, and when the tone is, well, let's let people out of prison, and we should be reducing the prison population, and if you commit a crime, it's not your fault. It's like the way you were brought up, and you know, all of these kinds of of sentiments. I think in people's minds, there's an impression that you're soft on crime? Well, I, I don't think she is. You know, she's responsible for 1,700 more police setting up an organised crime, crime unit targeting gangs, which is working, because we see, see she's seizing... or the police are seizing millions of dollars in guns and drugs and things like that. So, you know, she's doing her job capably, which is why the Prime Minister backs her and she has her confidence. Mm doesn't have our confidence, unfortunately. Uh, I think New Zealanders are very worried about the rise in violent crime. They, they can see the increase in gang activity. They see the youth crime uh, situation getting out of control. And then they look at what the government violent says... Violent gang crime is down. Well, violent crime is up by more than 20%. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the concern that New Zealanders rightly have is, is the government focused on it or not? And then you look at what the government's focused on in the justice area. Well, um, you know, their main message in Parliament at the moment is that we're too tough on the criminals. We've got to get rid of the three well, strikes that's, that's, legislation. That's, 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 well, there is not one, thing. one person in Parliament that defends the illegal activities of gangs. We all hate it. OK. All right, we have to leave it there. Thank you both so much for coming in. This was a fun one today. Enjoyed <laughs> it. Um,